a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Singapore Singapore, officially the Republic of Singapore, is a sovereign city-state and island country in Southeast Asia. It lies one degree north of the equator, at the southern tip of the Malay Peninsula, with Indonesia's Riau Islands to the south and Peninsula Malaysia to the north. Singaporese territory consists of one main island along with 62 other islets. Since independence, extensive land reclamation has increased its total size by 23%. The country is known for its transition from third world to first world in a single generation, under the leadership of its founding father, Lee Kuan Yew. Stamford Raffles founded Colonial Singapore in 1819 as a trading post of the British East India Company. After the company's collapse in 1858, the islands were ceded to the British Raj as a crown colony. During the Second World War, Singapore was occupied by Japan. It gained independence from the UK in 1963 by federating with other former British territories to form Malaysia. But separated two years later over ideological differences, becoming a sovereign nation in 1965. After early years of turbulence and despite lacking natural resources and a hinterland, the nation developed rapidly as an Asian tiger economy, based on external trade in its workforce. Singapore is a global hub for education, entertainment, finance, healthcare, human capital, innovation, logistics, manufacturing, technology, tourism, trade, and transport. The city ranks highly in numerous international rankings, and has been recognized as the most, technology-ready, nation, top international meeting city, city with, best investment potential, world's smartest city, world's safest country, third most competitive country, third largest foreign exchange market, third largest financial center, third largest oil refining, and trading center fifth most innovative country, and the second busiest container port. The Economist has ranked Singapore as the most expensive city to live in, since 2013. It is identified as a tax haven. Singapore is the only country in Asia with an AAA sovereign rating from all major rating agencies, and one of 11 worldwide. Globally, the Port of Singapore and Changi Airport have held the titles of leading, maritime capital, and, best airport, respectively for consecutive years, while Singapore Airlines is the 2018, world's best airline. Singapore ranks ninth on the UN Human Development Index with the third highest GDP per capita. It is placed highly in key social indicators, education, healthcare, life expectancy, quality of life, personal safety and housing. Although income inequality is high, 90% of homes are owner-occupied. The Singaporean passport is joint first with Japan for visa-free travel granted by the most countries to its citizens. The city-state is home to 5.6 million residents, 39% of whom are foreign nationals, including permanent residents. There are four official languages, English, Malay, Mandarin Chinese, and Tamil. Most Singaporeans are bilingual and English serves as the nation's lingua franca. Its cultural diversity is reflected in its extensive ethnic cuisine and major festivals. Pew Research has found that Singapore has the highest religious diversity of any country. Multiracialism has been enshrined in its constitution since independence, and continues to shape national policies in education, housing, politics, among others. Singapore is a unitary parliamentary republic with a Westminster system of unicameral parliamentary government. The People's Action Party has won every election since self-government began in 1959. As one of the five founding members of ASEAN, Singapore is the host of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Secretariat and Pacific Economic Cooperation Council Secretariat, as well as many international conferences and events. It is also a member of the East Asia Summit, Non-Aligned Movement and the Commonwealth of Nations. Etymology the English name of Singapore is an anglicization of the native Malay name for the country, which was in turn derived from Sanskrit, hence the customary reference to the nation as the Lion City, and its inclusion in many of the nation's symbols. However, it is unlikely that lions ever lived on the island. Sang Nila Utama, the Srivijayan prince said to have founded and named the island Singapura. 
perhaps saw a Malayan tiger. There are however other suggestions for the origin of the name and scholars do not believe that the origin of the name is firmly established. The central island has also been called Pulau Ujong as far back as the 3rd century CE, literally, island at the end, in Malay. Singapore is also referred to as the garden city for its tree-lined streets and greening efforts since independence, and the little red dot for how the island nation is depicted on many maps of the world and Asia, as a red dot. Also referred to as the Switzerland of Asia, in 2017 due to its neutrality on international and regional issues. Ancient Singapore The Greco-Roman astronomer Ptolemy identified a place called Sabana in the general area in the 2nd century, and the earliest written record of Singapore occurs in a Chinese account from the 3rd century, describing the island of Pulu O Chung. This was itself a transliteration from the Malay name, Pulau Ujong, or, Island at the End. The Nagra Kretagama, a Javanese epic poem written in 1365, referred to a settlement on the island called Tumasi. In 1299, according to the Malay annals, the Kingdom of Singapura was founded on the island by Sang Nila Yudama. Although the historicity of the accounts as given in the Malay annals is the subject of academic debates, it is nevertheless known from various documents that Singapore in the 14th century, then known as Damasic, was a trading port under the influence of both the Majapahit Empire and the Siamese kingdoms and was a part of the Indosphere of Greater India. These Indianized kingdoms, a term coined by George Coeds were characterized by surprising resilience, political integrity and administrative stability. Historical sources also indicate that around the end of the 14th century, its ruler Paramaswara was attacked by either the Majapahit or the Siamese, forcing him to move on to Malacca where he founded the Sultanate of Malacca. Archaeological evidence suggests that the main settlement on Fort Canning was abandoned around this time, although a small trading settlement continued in Singapore for some time afterwards. In 1613, Portuguese raiders burned down the settlement, and the island faded into obscurity for the next two centuries. By then Singapore was nominally part of the Johor Sultanate, the wider maritime region, and much trade was under Dutch control for the following period. British colonization Raffles arrived in Singapore on 28 January 1819 and soon recognized the island as a natural choice for the new port. The island was then nominally ruled by the Sultan of Johor, who was controlled by the Dutch and the Bugis. However, the Sultanate was weakened by factional division and Tengku Abdurrahman and his officials were loyal to Tengku Rahman's elder brother Tengku Long who was living in exile in Rio. With the Tremengong's help, Raffles managed to smuggle Tengku Long back into Singapore. He offered to recognize Tengku Long as the rightful Sultan of Johor, given the title of Sultan Hussein and provide him with a yearly payment of $5,000 and $3,000 to the Temengong. In return, Sultan Hussein would grant the British the right to establish a trading post on Singapore. A formal treaty was signed on 6 February 1819, and modern Singapore was born. In 1824, the entire island as well as the Temengong became a British possession after a further treaty with the Sultan. In 1826, Singapore became part of the Straits Settlements under the jurisdiction of British India, becoming the regional capital in 1836. Prior to Raffles' arrival, there were only about a thousand people living on the island, mostly indigenous Malays along with a handful of Chinese. By 1860 the population had swelled to over 80,000, more than half being Chinese. Many of these early immigrants came to work on the pepper and gambia plantations. Later, in the 1890s, when the rubber industry also became established in Malaya and Singapore, the island became a global center for rubber sorting and export. Singapore was not much affected by First World War, as the conflict did not spread to Southeast Asia. The only significant event during the war was a mutiny by the Muslim sepoys from British India who were garrisoned in Singapore, which occurred in 1915. After hearing rumors that they were to be sent off to fight the Ottoman Empire, which was a Muslim state, the soldiers rebelled. They killed their officers and several British civilians before the mutiny was suppressed by non-Muslim troops arriving from Johor and Burma. After the First World War, the British built the large Singapore naval base as part of the defensive Singapore strategy. 
Originally announced in 1923, the construction of the base proceeded slowly until the Japanese invasion of Manchuria in 1931. When completed in 1939, at the very large cost of $500 million, it boasted what was then the largest dry dock in the world, the third largest floating dock, and having enough fuel tanks to support the entire British Navy for six months. It was defended by heavy 15-inch naval guns stationed at Fort Zeloso, Fort Canning, and Labrador, as well as Royal Air Force Airfield at Tengu Air Base. Winston Churchill touted it as the Gibraltar of the East, and military discussions often referred to the base as simply, East of Suez. Unfortunately, it was a base without a fleet. The British home fleet was stationed in Europe, and the British could not afford to build a second fleet to protect its interests in Asia. The plan was for the home fleet to sail quickly to Singapore in the event of an emergency. However, after World War II broke out in 1939, the fleet was fully occupied with defending Britain. World War II During the Second World War, the Imperial Japanese Army invaded British Malaya, culminating in the Battle of Singapore. When the British force of 60,000 troops surrendered on 15 February 1942, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill called the defeat, the worst disaster and largest capitulation in British history. British losses during the fighting for Singapore were heavy, with a total of nearly 85,000 personnel captured, in addition to losses during the earlier fighting in Malaya. About 5,000 were killed or wounded, of which Australians made up the majority. Japanese casualties during the fighting in Singapore amounted to 1,714 killed and 3,378 wounded. The occupation was to become a major turning point in the histories of several nations, including those of Japan, Britain, and the then-colonial state of Singapore. Japanese newspapers triumphantly declared the victory as deciding the general situation of the war. Singapore was renamed, meaning, Light of the South. Between 5,000 and 25,000 ethnic Chinese people were killed in the subsequent Suk Ching massacre. British forces had planned to liberate Singapore in 1945. However, the war ended before these operations could be carried out. It was subsequently reoccupied by British, Indian and Australian forces following the Japanese surrender in September. Meanwhile, Tomoyuki Yamashita was tried by a US military commission for war crimes, but not for crimes committed by his troops in Malaya or Singapore. He was convicted and hanged in the Philippines on 23 February 1946. Post-war period After the Japanese surrender to the Allies on 15 August 1945, Singapore fell into a brief state of violence and disorder. Looting and revenge killing were widespread. British troops led by Lord Louis Mountbatten, Supreme Allied Commander for Southeast Asia Command, returned to Singapore to receive formal surrender of the Japanese forces in the region from General Itagaki Sai's hero on behalf of General Hisaichi Terauchi on 12 September 1945, and a British military administration was formed to govern the island until March 1946. Much of the infrastructure had been destroyed during the war, including harbour facilities at the port of Singapore. There was also a shortage of food leading to malnutrition, disease, and rampant crime and violence. High food prices, unemployment, and workers' discontent culminated into a series of strikes in 1947 causing massive stoppages in public transport and other services. By late 1947, the economy began to recover, facilitated by a growing demand for tin and rubber around the world but it would take several more years before the economy returned to pre-war levels. The failure of Britain to successfully defend Singapore had destroyed its credibility as infallible ruler in the eyes of Singaporeans. The decades after the war saw a political awakening amongst the local populace, and the rise of anti-colonial and nationalist sentiments, epitomized by the slogan Murdecca, or, independence, in the Malay language. The British, on their part, were prepared to gradually increase self-governance for Singapore and Malaya. On 1 April 1946, the Strait Settlements was dissolved, and Singapore became a separate crown colony with a civil administration headed by a governor. In July 1947, separate executive and legislative councils were established, 
and the election of six members of the Legislative Council was scheduled in the following year. During the 1950s, Chinese communists with strong ties to the trade unions and Chinese schools waged a guerrilla war against the government, leading to the Malayan emergency. The 1954 National Service Riots, Chinese Middle Schools Riots, and Hock Lee Bus Riots in Singapore were all linked to these events. David Marshall, pro-independence leader of the Labour Front, won Singapore's first general election in 1955. He led a delegation to London, but Britain rejected his demand for complete self-rule. He resigned and was replaced by Lemieux Hock in 1956, whose policies convinced Britain to grant Singapore full internal self-government for all matters except defence and foreign affairs. During the May 1959 elections, the People's Action Party won a landslide victory. Singapore became an internally self-governing state within the Commonwealth, with Lee Kuan Yew as its first Prime Minister. As a result, the 1959 general elections were the first after full internal self-government was granted by the British authorities. Singapore was not yet fully independent, as the British still controlled external affairs such as the military and foreign relations. However, Singapore was now a recognised state. Governor Sir William Almond Codrington Good served as the first Yang Di Pachu in Nagara, and was succeeded by Yusuf Benishak. Campaign for Merger Despite their successes in governing Singapore, the PAP leaders believed that Singapore's future lay with Malaya due to strong ties between the two nations. It was thought that the merger would benefit the economy by creating a common market which will support new industries, thus solving the ongoing unemployment woes in Singapore. However, a sizable pro-communist wing of the PAP was strongly opposed to the merger, fearing a loss of influence. This is, because the ruling party of Malaya, United Malay's national organization, was staunchly anti-communist, and would support the non-communist faction of PAP against them. UMNO, who were initially skeptical of the idea of a merger as they distrust the PAP government, and were concerned that the large Chinese population in Singapore would alter the racial balance on which their political power base depended, changed their minds about the merger after being afraid of being taken over by pro-communists. On 27 May 1961, Malaya's Prime Minister, Tunku Abdul Rahman, made a surprise proposal of a federation of Malaysia, comprising existing Federation of Malaya, Singapore, Brunei and the British Borneo territories of North Borneo and Sarawak. The AMNO leaders believed that the additional Malay population in the Borneo territories would offset Singapore's Chinese population. The British government, for its part, believed that the merger would prevent Singapore from becoming a haven for communism. Singapore with Malaysia the 1962 merger referendum provided options for a merger with Malaysia, but no option for avoiding the merger. As a result, on 16 September 1963 Singapore joined with the Federation of Malaya, the Crown Colony of Sarawak and the Crown Colony of North Borneo to form the new Federation of Malaysia under the terms of the Malaysia Agreement. Given Singapore's limited size and lack of natural resources, it was felt integrating with Malaya would provide a route to stronger economic development. The merger would also give the PAP legitimacy, and remove the threat of communist government over Singapore. However, shortly after the merger, the Singapore state government and the Malaysian central government disagreed on many political and economic issues, and communal strife culminated in the 1964 ACE riots in Singapore. On 10 March 1965, a bomb planted by Indonesian saboteurs on a mezzanine floor of McDonald House exploded, killing three people and injuring 33 others. It was the deadliest of at least 42 bomb incidents which occurred during the confrontation. Two members of the Indonesian Marine Corps, Osman bin Haji Muhammad Ali and Harun bin Said, were eventually convicted and executed for the crime. The explosion caused $250,000 in damage to McDonald House. There were many heated ideological conflicts between the two governments, even on the economic front. Despite an earlier agreement to establish a common market, Singapore continued to face restrictions when trading with the rest of Malaysia. In retaliation, Singapore did not extend to Sabak and Sarawak the full extent of the loans agreed to for economic development of the two eastern states. 
The situation escalated to such an intensity that talks soon broke down and abusive speeches and writing became rife on both sides. Because of this, on 7 August 1965, the then Malaysian Prime Minister Tunku Abdul Rahman, seeing no alternative to avoid further bloodshed, advised the Parliament of Malaysia that it should vote to expel Singapore from Malaysia. On 9 August 1965, the Malaysian Parliament voted 126 to 0 to move a bill to amend the constitution providing for Singapore to separate from the Federation of Malaysia. This gave Singapore independence, unusually against its own will. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries Would you like to know more?